he experienced separation from his father, if not but for an instant, to pay the price for sin. And his depth of love's expression didn't stop there. He went into the grave, into Hades itself, buying back the authority that our forefathers had lost. That's deep from the throne to the groan, isn't it? Well, yeah. Amen. How high is God's love? His love is so high, it starts as low as you can go and ascends back to the surface of the earth and ascends back to heaven to a position higher than he had before when he left. So his love is higher than it is deep. For he has a name that is above every name that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every, and every tongue, tongue confess. confess. That's every language. And if you've got two knees, they're hitting the ground that he is Lord. God's love is great. And yet the message would be incomplete if we just focused on the incredibleness of God's love. Let's just focus on it a little bit more and then I'm gonna bring balance to it with an old Negro spiritual. <laughs> the hymn says the love of God is greater far than tongue or pen could ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell. Could we with ink the ocean fill and were the skies of parchment made, were every stalk on earth a quill and every man a scribe by trade. To write the love of God above would drain the oceans dry, nor could the scroll obtain the whole, though stretched from sky to sky. Isn't that great? The chorus is, O oh, love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong, it shall forevermore endure, the saints and angels song. And that love is focused on you, my friend. Now let's balance this message. It's balanced in the expression expressed in the old Negro spiritual about the love of God. It's so high, you can't get over it. So wide, you can't get around it. So low, you can't get under it. But you got to come through the door. Yes, amen. Yes. His love's great. The world needs to hear about it, but they need to hear about the door, the access. For the one who came to express ultimate love declared himself to be the only way to the Father. So it would be a great tragedy to miss out on the benefit available to you and I of experiencing the eternal love of God and eternity with him by missing out on the door. And it's not fine print, folks. It's there clear in your red letter bible is there in red letters <laughs> i am the way the truth and the life no, no one comes, comes to the father but by me Amen. lord i pray for every person here if they do not know you lord may they know how much you love them and may they know that you are the way and may they call on your name and pray a prayer like this jesus here i am i believe you're the son of god and I ask you to come into my life. I give you my life. That's how it begins. Well, when did you give your life to the Lord? <laughs> I gave my life to the Lord this morning. And another morning. Giving your life to the Lord is not a one-time thing. It's a daily commitment. That's Lord, good. Lord, lead and guide yes, me today. Yes, that's good. Now, in conclusion, for those who know that God's loved them, who knows that they've come in through the door, they know that Jesus is the only way. But the question for us is, are we extending that great love of God to others? Or are we making people jump through hoops? When they mess up, do we put them on probation? <laughs> do we judge them? Do we harbor bitterness? and unforgiveness in our hearts. 
that's the other technicality in this thing. God's love is great. It's so great. He loves a person you can't, as Bugs Bunny said, I can't stand till I can't stand no more. <laughs> he loves that person just as much as he loves you. you so will we love people like he does. Yeah, but they did me wrong. Well, did they do the son of God wrong? Yes. Yet the father chose to forgive. Right. We often think of the price Jesus paid, the suffering he went through for us, but think of his father, what he went through. You know, it's one thing to be slapped around. It's not pleasant, is it? But for someone to slap your child around, oh, oh man, mm. that's a whole nother level. When my little boy fell and chipped his tooth, I thought, I thought it was the end of the world. I wanted one of my teeth to be knocked out for that not to happen to him. And yet God took the ultimate sin and used it, transformed it as the payment for the most vile acts known to man to balance the scales of justice so that justice would be served in the body of his son. He took the ultimate sin to bring the ultimate redemption. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. We are called to be likewise, to walk in his steps. In the third century, one of the desert fathers, I think he was one of those monastic guys, was ministering to one of his mentorees who had been highly offended. And he said, look, you've got to forgive. You got to let this go. If you want to walk in the joy of your forgiveness, you got to let this go. The young man said, I don't care what you say, I'm going to get my revenge. So his name was uh, Sosoe. Sosoe saw he, he could, there was no reasoning with the young man. So he said, well, let's pray. So the young man bowed his head and this is what Father Sosoe said. Almighty God, we do not need you anymore. Because it seems we're going to take matters into our own hands and perform our own acts of vengeance. So we won't be bothering you about anything because we are now going to be our own God. At that point, the young man interrupted him and said, I get the message. I get the message. I'm going to forgive. I'm going to forgive. I'm going to forgive. In more relevant times, I read a story recently. A pastor wrote it anonymously that a friend of his wanted to kill someone for what had happened to him years earlier he said another man ran off with his wife stole his wife from him and he said it ruined my life they moved to another state they were doing great and i lost everything in the wake of the divorce it was hard to handle and in my anger i got into a scuffle with a police officer and was charged with assaulting a police officer and had to go to court and in the courtroom, this guy decided to show up and gloat at me all through the trial. And when I lost my case, he stood up and grinned and flipped me the finger. He says, I hate him. I'm going to kill him. I have a 32 caliber pistol strapped to my ankle right now. He's coming to town in two weeks. And I'm going to kill him. He says, I've got it all figured out. I'm already 63. So they won't give me the death penalty because of the passion I have, <laughs> the nature of the crime, what he did. I'll just get the rest of my life in prison, three hots and a cot, three meals a day in a bed, free medical care, free dental care, and I won't have to work no more and I'll just enter my retirement behind bars. <laughs> and then there's that way to Stunned. do it. <laughs> pastor paused and he's, he, he blubbered out well y you have been in prison for 19 years yourself you already in prison this guy is already killing you your potential is sapped your creativity is gone you're eat up with bitterness you're already in prison what, what's going to change and this won't even change your heart a week later, he contacted the pastor. He says, I don't want to be in prison the rest of my life. I've been in prison long enough. I've gotten rid of my pistol. I repent. Amen. Yes, Lord. Everyone means you're the one. There's someone here 
wrestling with bitterness. I'm going to be here for a while longer. I would love for a chance to pray with you. Let him go. Let him go. Father, I pray for every person here. I thank you, Lord, that you love us. You care for us. And Lord, we want to receive that through what you did for us on the cross. But Lord, I pray we would begin to extend that love to others. And to any man, woman, boy, or girl is locked up with woundedness and vengefulness and bitterness. I pray, Lord, today would be their freedom. May Jesus reign in every kingdom of our heart. In Jesus' name. Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Yes, Lord.